Coming up today on DMTV, we have John Toner, MBE and retired director of Hastings Hotels and board member of My My, the self-awareness charity, Mind Your Mate, Mind Yourself. Hello, this is Deirdre from DeirdreMcGuire.com and welcome to DMTV, the place to take charge of your emotions and transform your life. So welcome, John. Thank you very much for coming yep. today. I'll go straight into the first question. What has been the biggest challenge in your life? Uh, the biggest challenge in my life, Deirdre, has been that my alcohol problem uh, was really, that was the biggest thing to affect me. And, and, and what made it so awful? Uh, I suppose what really uh, alcoholism was so awful for me was that uh, I thought I knew all about alcoholism because alcoholism was in the family. And I went to the first day open meeting at 18 and uh, read the big book and all, and I thought I understood it all, you know. Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, I didn't do it anyway. Uh, it, 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 Another 18 years later, like I, I, I realised I needed to do something, you know. And, and what made that the, the lowest point, John? Well, I suppose uh, my employer at the time uh, confidentially just gave me a, a word of advice. He said, John, uh, you know, you just watch your drinking, you know, because you, you leave us no other position. And that was that was OK. I mean, I sort of took that in mind and, and I sort of uh, changed my type of mode and standard of mode, drinking different times and different drinks and everything. Tried all, all mm -hmm. the things, but it didn't work any. But a, but a week later, a very good friend of mine rang me and we had a conversation for about 10 minutes, but at the end, of it, this boy turned around and he said, John, tell me something, John, would you have a problem with the booze, you know? And, you know, it was just like if, if that friend saying that to me was really, really hit me, you know, it was like somebody sticking a knife in me, you know? Imagine. And, uh, you know, I didn't, I said, I don't know, no, I tried to defend it to him and he didn't care one way or other because he didn't have a problem with the booze, but he just said it, you know, and it was, wasn't important to him, but it certainly hit the nerve with me, you know? Uh, so, so, so what then <coughs> made that the turning point of your life? Well, I suppose, I mean, I realised then that, that uh, my drinking had got out of control and I couldn't manage my life and my drinking, you know. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I mean, I hadn't been, a, I mean, I am a uh, RC, uh, but I hadn't been practising, so, I mean, I never had been, I hadn't been masked for many years, you know, but I ended up anyway on my knees asking if there's a God or higher power there take me out of this, you know, see what I need to do, you know. And within about 10 minutes, a person came to mind who, uh, who had no one to be, to, to be a recovering alcoholic. And uh, I vowed that, I, I was away from home at the time, but I vowed that as soon as I get home, I would meet him and, you know, and do mm -hmm. something about it. So the question is, did you get over it? Oh, yes, I mean, I think when, when I went on the road of recovery, I found that, uh, you know, that it was so good for me to be, to see that other people had the same problems and that they, they, had, they had got over them and that uh, if I did the things that were suggested to me to, to stay sober, that I would do also, you know. So what did you learn from all of it? Well, I just learned that uh, certainly one thing is that uh, don't, don't uh, believe yourself all the time because that, uh, for me, alcohol is cunning and baffling and it really confused me. And, and I mean, it, it, it told me I wasn't an alcoholic when I probably knew back with that the 18th open meeting I was because there was probably too much been said that was familiar to me even then, you know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What was the gift in it, John? The gift in it was both sobriety and able to live and uh, rear a, a five, five children, able to be with them and spend time with them rather than spend time in the pubs or maybe it probably wouldn't be even here for them, you know, today. Imagine that. Well, that's so, it really. so what would you say to the younger you back then? Well, I'd say just, just listen to your, to your feelings when you feel them and take action at that time. Don't wait, don't delay. Yeah, so take an action. Take an action. It is time. the key. Yeah. Good man. And what would you say to someone else out there just like you? I, you know, I think it, it is a, the great difficulty is owning up that you, you, you're not in control and you can't manage your life and that you need some help with somebody to do help you through your life. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's, that's the big decision, but don't be afraid of it. Make it the decision and do it. Good man. And uh, finally, John, share your wisdom in four words or less. Well, the four less probably is uh, never fool yourself. 
Okay, that's very good wisdom. Thank you very much indeed, John. And thank you very much for joining us today. Uh, joining us again next week when there will be more words of wisdom. You can take charge of your emotions and you can change your life. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.